So, uh, welcome to Well, There's Your Problem, which is a podcast about engineering disasters. Yeah, we came okay, up with a name uh, for it now. We, we did come up with a name. Uh, definitely not ripping off anyone from the Blue Collar Comedy Tour. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I'm Justin Rosniak, also known as Do Not Eat on the internet, where I have a YouTube about cities. Uh, joining me are today uh alice caldwell kelly or alice avazandam on twitter if you're nasty i do a podcast to- called trash future about how technology is making everything awful and also this and liam anderson uh do not eat roommate and friend yes also on twitter but it's just gonna be me being a dick and do not eat replies so <laughs> yeah yeah i mean same so uh I, anyway i gotta i got a joke okay Go on. So a, a Catholic, a Muslim, and a Jew walk into a podcast. <laughs> Very good. Very it, good. It, it's us. We're the joke. We will mm. be peace in our time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just this, so, this is what interfaith dialogue is: is making fun of <laughs> like buildings that fall down. Yes, we've done it. <laughs> Where's my Nobel Peace Prize? If Kissinger can have one, I can have one. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to talk about the Sampung Department Store, uh, which was built in 1987 in Seoul, South Korea. Now, this this building isn't there anymore. Off to a promising start, so, then. Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, start out with, we're going to talk a little bit about what this building was made of, right? Uh, which is a material called reinforced concrete, right? Sounds safe. Reinforced concrete. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, it's reinforced. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, you know, re- reinforced concrete, fairly simple concept, right? We got concrete. It's got metal bars in it, right? This increases its tensile strength because concrete's very bad in tension. It just, you know, sort of rips apart. But if you put metal in there, then you can't do that, right? Uh, and then so we have different ki- types of bars. You might see someone say, well, we need a number three bar or a number eight bar. The, the number is the diameter in eighths of an inch. Um, because that's an intuitive com- system. Yes. One, one of the very few intuitive systems in engineering, <laughs> actually. Uh, and there's like a lot of complicated calculations if you're going to figure out how these perform structurally. It depends on where you place the metal, how much it is, so on and so forth. Uh, and sometimes you get rebar that's encased in plastic. Sometimes you don't. Um, if you encase it in plastic, it doesn't corrode as quickly unless you get like a small gap in the plastic somewhere, in which case it corrodes much, much more quickly if there were no plastic. Hmm. Is this going to be Chekhov's plastic rebar? Uh, <laughs> not in this case. Okay. Eventually, yes. We, we will come back uh, to this in a future <laughs> episode. Yeah, reinforced concrete does uh, interesting things. Uh so, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Young's modulus and, um, you know, elastic and plastic deformation. This is going to be relevant later, right? So you see this chart here, and I'm sure people who are listening to this are, are going to be annoyed here because the chart helps a lot. No, on, on um, the contrary. People in the comments last time were saying they wanted more math. They wanted you to put the math up on the corner of the screen or something. Well, unfortunately, there's no uh, units on this uh, graph so, uh, you know, you're, you're just going to have to deal with not having math. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's just, it has a scale of, like, more to less good. <laughs> yes. Well, there's, there's, it's interesting, because some of the stuff that's good is also bad. Hmm. It sounds like engineering. So this is, a, this is a chart with stress on the vertical axis, right, and strain on the horizontal axis. Strain is the length of the piece of material over its previous length, right? So if it's like the strain is 0.01, that means it's 1% longer than it was before. And then we got this line here that goes up, it makes this little hump, and then it makes a big hump, and then that's where the thing breaks. So when we have, when we're stretching a material out, we're applying more force to it, right? That's the stress. Well, stress is actually technically pressure, but, um, but it's pressure in like a tension way. It's weird. Um, so 
as we apply stress, we go up this straight slope here to the yield strength. This is elastic deformation, right? So when I release the pressure, it will return to its original length, right? The piece of material we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. After this point, we go into what's called plastic deformation, right? So if we continue adding stress, it stays a longer length than it was before, right? It's bigger than before. And this is generally bad from an engineering standpoint, right? Um, but we do, we can eke a bit more strength out of the material through a process called uh, strain hardening, right? So as, as it gets longer, the molecules in the material, you know, they sort of like interlink, they get stretched out, right? So there's a little more strength you can eke out as you elongate the material to a point called ultimate strength. Hmm. Wasn't right? that a mm -hmm. wrestling promotion? <laughs> I thought it was from an anime. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's when you put the, like, rebar, uh, it has, like, a gravity belt on it, and then it takes that off and it achieves ultimate strength. Yes. Right. Absolutely. And, and then past ultimate strength, right, you can see the stress goes down as we elongate the material. That's called necking, right? So the, the cross-section of the material gets smaller. So if you ever lifted like a slice of cheese pizza up, right, and there's like little strings of cheese, it's the same thing, except we're doing it with steel mm. instead of with cheese. No, I'm disappointed. This is this is sort of a graph which is this is this graph is like representative of uh uh steel more so than it's representative of concrete, which you know just sort of goes up in a linear fashion and cracks. But we're looking at reinforced concrete, right? Mm -hmm. which is a combination of steel and concrete it does some weird stuff. Yeah, because the steel is going to, like, deform in there, right? Like, Yes. Yep. The, che the cheese in the pizza. It's like having a cheese-filled yes. crust, <laughs> I guess. Basically, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so I've, I found uh... a metaphor that's on my level for this. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let's get back to the building in question, right? Mm. It's, it's a mall, so, right? Like It was not supposed to be a mall. Hmm. I don't... But it became a mall. Hmm. Okay, what what did it start out as? Or what was it supposed to be? There's this guy, Lee Jung. He runs a company called Sampung Group, which is mostly a construction contractor, I think. Right? And on this site, he was going to build a four-story residential building, right? Hmm. But while construction was underway, he decided, mm, we're going to turn this into a mall. Right. Okay, so f for so, Zoomers, a mall is where, like, uh, people our age used to go to shoplift, um, like, clip-on earrings. Wander <laughs> around the food court, go to P.F. Yeah, Chang's, go to exactly. Hot Topic. Yeah, I remember the days. Yeah. The, the, we don't have those anymore. <laughs> I think the recession took out most of them. Uh, we got lifestyle centers now, which are the same thing, but dumber and worse. Mm. No air conditioning in those. No. Things. That makes it better. Love to go to Cape somehow. Spade in 106 degree heat, dying the whole time. <laughs> yep. So, uh, converting this to a mall resulted in some problems, right? So this is a this is a very sophisticated oh, schematic <laughs> of the plan of the building. Yeah, th 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 this is a graph right? of the problems, an artist's uh, impression yeah, of the problems. I uh, thank God you don't have a degree in art. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so what you're looking at is a plan view of a representation of the building, right? And each one of these dots is a column, and then there's outer walls, you know. So the the plans called for 36-inch columns. They're built to hold four stories of building, right? There's a factor of safety of two. That means that the columns are twice as strong as they need to be, right? Which is pretty good, mm. you know? You, you expect, like, nothing bad's going to happen to this building, right? Yeah, I mean, how you would know, you double the weight of it, even? Like... Well, we're we'll going to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, since uh, Lee Jung wanted to convert this to a commercial space, uh, a mall, he had to make some alterations to the plan, right? So, he had to <laughs> car carve out a couple columns so he could put some escalators in, right? Oh, of course. Uh, yeah. They made the columns narrower to fit more merchandise in the, uh, in the mall. Uh... 
the col the space between the columns was made larger, uh, again to fit more mer merchandise in. And along the way, there were a bunch of uh, contractors, engineers, so on and so forth, and they told them the changes you were making are unsafe, and we're not going to do them. Right? To point people point blank refused to make the changes he wanted. So what he did was he fired them, and used his own in-house contractors to do it. Ah, that's efficient. That's so efficient. Yes. I, I mean, we have to say that this is something that's absolutely inherent in South Korean culture. Uh, they have these giant corporations called chai bowls, like, say, uh, Walmart or General Motors or General Electric, that have vast outsized influence in their society, and that could never happen anywhere else. So, you know, don't worry about this. Absolutely not. This is impossible to happen in, in our sophisticated yeah, exactly. and extremely good economic system. <laughs> right? um, so, also, they decided to cheap out and use half the amount of rebar per column that was specified in the plan. So there's eight pieces of rebar instead of 16 bars. Hmm. Right? Now, this aren't, these aren't the only changes, though. Um, all right. <laughs> So. <laughs> Terrific. The, these are actually the, like this isn't this isn't Justin's work. These are the original architectural plans in which they just they slap a fifth floor onto the plan. Four floors. Fuck it. It's done. Five floors is fine. Five and five start with the same letter. Yeah. So they needed to build a fifth floor, right? Mm -hmm. Because the zoning didn't allow for a building that was strictly a mall, right? It had to be mixed use. And you don't want to take away from your mall space, so you have to add the housing on top of it. Yeah, you gotta add it. You gotta add another floor. It wasn't gonna be housing. It was supposed to be an ice skating rink at first, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what kind of Trump ass? This guy Lee June. It just he just sounds like the Porky the Capitalist Pig meme. <laughs> like big top hat and everything. Did the uh, company point out that the structure just wouldn't support it, and they too were fired? The fifth floor? Yeah. Probably, yeah. So, it was converted, that space was converted while construction was underway to uh, a couple of restaurants, right? And these restaurants had heated floors, hmm. which I guess is a, it's a thing over there. In, it, it, was a, it still is a thing over there in South Korea, right? Um, and these heated floors were four feet thick. And that's like mostly concrete and pipes. Did he put a fucking... Roman hypercost on top of his four-story building. Yes. yes. Ah. Okay. Yes. Good. That's wonderful. So you can, you can have your caldarium and your like your baths on the top. That's that's where you want to have structures like that because they're known for being very lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely not adding weight uh, by what, shoving what? in pipes in there. Definitely mm. not. Much like swimming pools. Uh, <laughs> So, in addition to this, the columns on the fifth floor didn't align with the columns on any other oh, hell floor. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so the weight of the fifth floor was entirely supported by the uh, floor slab uh, on the fifth floor. The load had to go uh, like just through the column, then through the slab, then through the major column right oh, I, I i don't like the look of this already you can sometimes get away with this hmm. now when i say get away with this that's usually not a phrase you want to use when <laughs> thinking of building design no <laughs> um but that's usually when you're using um a, a sort of construction where there's like beams holding the floor up right and then you'd have the column go into the beam and then the beam is big enough to transfer the load laterally. This didn't do that. They were using flat slab construction. So there's just a floor slab, right? And then they just build the column on top of that. And this floor slab... I mean, obviously here it was very thick. But uh, otherwise, you know... It was very thick, but for purposes of thermal conduction rather than strength, you know? So... And then, of course, uh, they also put reinforcing in the wrong spot in every floor slab, which reduced the strength. And, um, you know, it's, it, it, the whole thing was kind of... Uh, it was pretty iffy, mm. right? Was, was this... Was very iffy. Was this just to save money, or was there a time thing, too? Like, were they hurrying to get this done? 
it wasn't so much to save money as to make more money in the future. Ah, okay. Right? Lee Jung is thinking for the future. He's thinking, if I make this building more uh, able to handle merchandise, then I can make more money. You know? Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's thinking with the brain Yeah, but there. buy more yeah, top it. hats and monocles. Yes. So, you know, fifth, the fifth floor, right... What is it? It's just holding up the roof, so that's no big deal. Roofs are usually built a little more lightly than the rest of the building because we're not putting stuff on top of the roof usually. You know, maybe you'll get some snow or some rain, but other than that, you know, we're, we're not really thinking in terms of, like, I'm going to put a bunch of stuff on the roof, right? So you can kind of get away with this misaligned column thing on one floor. Uh, except air conditioning units. The thing that makes right. um, a mall, as opposed to a, a like a, a lifestyle center. Yes, the lifeblood yes. of the mall. Mm -hmm. The sine qua non of mallness. <laughs> so, you know, it's a mall, right? Needs a lot of air conditioning. So he had three big chillers on the roof. They weighed 15 tons each, right? Uh, now, that's not so good for, you know, a roof which isn't designed to handle that. But as you can see in this picture, these air conditioning units, this isn't of the same building, obviously. Uh, they're sitting on steel beams, right? This is called dunnage. And the dunnage does a couple things. It lets you inspect the bottom of the machines more easily. Um, it protects them from corrosion a little bit. But the main thing is you transfer the load from these very heavy chillers to places where there are columns rather than have them just sit on the roof which might be engineered for, you know, a much lower load than the uh, air conditioning units are. So, the Sampung uh, Mall, a department store, whatever you call it, had three 15-ton chillers. Uh, and I say tons weight there. A lot of times if you say tons in reference to chillers, that's in terms of tons of cooling, which is like a weird imperial measurement which no one quite understands. Um, so it's like some number of BTUs. Uh, mm. So, But instead of that, it's just they're extremely heavy chunks of metal. Yes. So some people in neighboring buildings complained about the noise from the chillers, right? And so uh, the Lee Jung decides, all right, well, we'll move the chillers to get rid of these people complaining, right? So in 1993, they moved them by just dragging them across the roof. With, like, teams of guys? Like the beginning of Les Miserables? Like... I I have no idea. Just, just pulling Probably. them with ropes or something? Like... Uh, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see the precise method by which they did it. Maybe they used, like, those Chernobyl radio-controlled <laughs> roof robots. <laughs> yeah, every, everybody gets one minute of pulling on the air conditioner. <laughs> so they just literally straight up drag these air conditioners across an already weakened uh, roof, right? Well, I, I, I don't yeah, think this guy's yeah. going <laughs> to shell out for a crane, right? So you just put them on rollers or something. That would be my guess. Yeah, and then just that throw might them down work, the stairs yeah. or whatever. Fuck it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what if we just tilt the building slightly and then they'll slide down the roof to the place where we want them? Yeah, that's a yeah, good that's, idea. That's with a brain head. Yeah. Yes. All right. So they moved those in 1993, right? So two years later, in their new location, just sitting on the roof. There's like visible cracks in the roof slab um, from the air conditioners just sitting there and also powering on and powering off. That creates vibration, which makes uh, all the uh, all the cracks in the roof worse. Right. So Lee Jung's response is, all right, we're going to close off that section of the store and move the uh, move the stuff into the basement. Right. They didn't take any other action hmm. because that's fine. You can have a giant hole in your roof like the only way that air conditioner can hurt someone is if it comes down through it and, like, crushes someone and turns them into mulch, right? Like, it, yes. it, I don't know why the air conditioners had to have 150 tons on them in the Acme, like, white paint font in big <laughs> letters. <laughs> but if, if they had come down through the roof, somebody could have, like, um, had a giant bump on their head and had little stars and birds floating around them and then their teeth would have come out like piano keys. <laughs> 
Oh, so you, you would have opened up the door to the access has, hatch on the chiller, and they would have stumbled out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Just dusting themselves off. Yeah. Just aggressively bugs by the ass building collapse. There you go. <laughs> so, on the 29th of June, 1995, uh, the, the cracks are only getting wider, right? We're starting to see plastic deformation of the roof. Right to the point where you know there's big enough cracks in the slab that the rebar is the only thing holding it up. Hmm. So it's stretching, right? Like that's mm. yes. We're in the strain hardening portion. So things get a little bit better for a second, right? For for a little bit, hmm. yeah. So they close down the fifth floor in the morning, but the rest of the store is open, right? Uh, Lee Jung doesn't want to uh, lose a day's revenue for, you know, just a hole in the roof might happen, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. So, around noon, they shut off the air conditioners, turning it into a lifestyle center. <laughs> <as opposed to mall. laughs> uh, and that was, you know, to prevent vibration from, keeping, from making the cracks open further, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they have an emergency board meeting, right? And all the board members say... Look, Lee, you gotta close the store. You gotta get people out of here. Stuff's going wrong. And Lee's like, "No, no I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make money. We gotta make money today. Mm. We'll close it down later. We got a lot of customers today. We gotta make that money." Well, th this is the attitude that really makes uh, a businessman because he, he's not just an employer, right? He's a job creator, and in a minute, he's gonna create a ton of jobs in the search and rescue industry, in the funeral <laughs> industry. Uh, lawyers. It's it's yes. worth noting that Lee uh, did in fact leave after they told him, "Hey man, we gotta we gotta shut it down." But he well, of didn't course inform. He did. He's well, he, he's not stupid. He doesn't inform his own yeah. daughter, who oh. has to be pulled out like three days <laughs> later. <laughs> it's his it's his daughter in law. Oh, well, that that's oh, okay sorry, then. Right? That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goddamn <laughs> in law. It's cold. Though. Yeah. You, you have to. That, that's how it is in the mall business. You have to be like, look how bad I want it. You know, I'm not even taking my family out of the thing. I'm just getting out. Hashtag grind. Hashtag yeah. every day. Ha had to grind for this view, and the view is just an enormous pile of rubble, and they're pulling bodies out of it. Damn. So, about 5:52, uh, after you know all the executives have evacuated, but no one else has. That's, that's always There's a bad sign. Crack. If you see all of the guys yes. with, with briefcases <laughs> leaving, and you're just like, "Yeah, I, I my shift." I, mm. So there's there's audible cracking sounds throughout the building around 5:52 p.m., and the workers decide, "All right, we need to get everyone out of this building." Uh, well, that was a little bit too late because in 20 seconds the whole building collapsed. Efficient. Yes. Mm. So you know, it just uh, the the air conditioner air conditioner falls through the ceiling. Uh, the fifth floor, the fourth floor slab can't hold that load, so it pancakes down on the third floor, pancakes down on the second floor, first floor, and then there's three basement floors too. It got a hell of a way through there. Literally too. nine eleven into his own building. Yes, amazing. That that's the real efficiency. Is you don't even need a plane to do that. You don't even need. You know, terrorists with the motivation. No, no, you can just be one guy and just be like, well, I don't really feel like closing the thing, so... Eh. Who says capitalism can't be efficient? Yeah. Well, how how much money did he make that day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Asking the real questions. All right. So, this kills 502 people and traps 1,500 more people in the rubble. Mm. Uh, Seoul's mayor immediately said... We have to call off the rec rescue operation because it's too dangerous, which, which you know, is, is dumb. Everyone gets mad at him about hmm. that. Well, why? Why does he do this? Uh, he thinks because the rest of the building might collapse onto the rescue yeah. workers. Okay. Uh, well, everyone gets mad at him. He's like, I never said that. Uh, and they continue the rescue operation, right? Folks, so, it's, it's fake news. Fake news very bad. The lying media. <laughs> <laughs> After about... After about um, two days, they're like, okay, there's no one who's going to be alive in this building anymore. But they keep pulling out living people from the rubble until 17 days later. Jesus. Uh, people survive just by drinking rainwater, right? And a lot of people in the lower floors survived the collapse 
but then they drowned from the water used from fire suppression. Ah, oh, well that's cheery. I mean, this whole thing really does have something of a Trump vibe, and I like making fun of the guy because it's the only real punishment he's going to face for it, but this is grim. Like... Oh, he got ten years in prison, so... And oh. lost all his money, so at least there's yeah. that. Mm. I, I guess m my feeling is there's... <sighs> There's a general point we can derive from this, right? That, you, you know Liz Warren talking about, like, crony capitalism, or corrupt capitalism, or unfettered capitalism? Um, this is just, this is capitalism. It's working fine. Like, that mall slash lifestyle center, it, it, it's working as intended until the 20 seconds before the, like, columns punch through all of the, the floor slabs, right? Like, the guy's yes. making money. Um, and it's, it's not like, I, I, I made the joke earlier about it being Korean culture or whatever, but we love doing this. We love saying that engineering disasters, especially in Asia, like MH370, that's Malaysian culture of corruption or whatever. But this is what like your landlord or my landlord or any landlord would do if they could. And there's very, very few reasons why they can't. So that's reassuring. I'm feeling very good about being on the fourth floor of a five-story building right now and being like, yeah, my landlord would do this if he thought he could get away with it. That's why I like living in a hundred-year-old house, because I figure anything that could have go gone wrong already has. Mm. <laughs> New construction ruins everything again. My favorite part of this is actually that there was a facility manager examining the slabs in one of the restaurants like hours before the collapse. Uh, except that vibration from air conditioning was radiating through the cracks and the floor opened up. One of my, one of my favorite parts of the story. That, that is, like, we can drop the title there, because that really <laughs> is a case of, like, kick the tires on the building and be like, well... <laughs> it's probably fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't collapse until after closing time, yeah. <laughs> 5.52 is pretty late, you almost made it. <laughs> That was after that was after first shift, so uh, you know, <laughs> mm. basically closed. So now, in one, I, but I can sort of see Lee June's logic here, right? In terms of keeping the store open, right? Because mm. in a well-engineered building like uh, this one, about 125 miles northwest of Seoul, which was built in the same year, which I've chosen <laughs> completely arbitrarily. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, in in a well-engineered building, we don't expect failures like a roof slab failure to cascade all the way down, you know, the entire building, right? Um, you would you would expect, you know, okay, if if the roof collapses, you're gonna have a big expensive hole to fix, but like you're not gonna have, you know, the whole building pancake into the basement. Mm. Uh, I, it, I, I detect a flaw in your logic, though, there, which is that he built the fucking thing. He fired all of the people who told him this would happen. This is true, and he really ate up that whole factor of safety through stupid design modifications. So, mm hmm Yeah, like, I, I'm sure it's useful at the time when he's, like, about to go to whatever the South Korean equivalent of Club Fed is, like the Orange <laughs> County white-collar prison system. To be like, oh, I, I didn't know, but he did. He fi he fired all of the people who told him otherwise. Don't forget that the fire shield, uh, because they had to install the, install the fire shield, they also had to further cut uh, support columns. Oh, so that... Hmm. Well, at least at least there yeah. wasn't a fire. So well, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's ah, big government's ah, intrusion ah. into the design process, right? If they hadn't if they hadn't <laughs> been right. burdened that's, by yeah, the regulation yeah. of having to put in a fire shield, this might not have happened. Over mm. what it's worth, uh, the units, the air conditioning units, were in fact put on rollers and just straight up dragged across okay. the room. I was right. Awesome. <laughs> Disappointed by throwing down the stairs logic. I'm that. just imagining <laughs> like an ancient Egyptian team of, of like slaves dragging the, air, the chillers across the roof on logs. <laughs> yeah, You're more welcome. or less. Like... <laughs> so this happened, what, what year did this happen? 95, 1995, yes. Yeah, 95. That's... Uh, so, South Korea's been a democracy for seven years, sort of, by this point? 
having been propped up uh, like a succession of US backed military dictators. Do you think that maybe might have had an impact on the sort of local government mechanisms for inspecting this stuff and not being paid off to not inspect this stuff? I I mean, there were a lot of things falling over in South Korea in the 90s and the 80s. Uh, Stuff Mm -hmm. was just like, you know, so I I believe there may there may have actually been some corruption from uh, a United States backed. Uh, fascist regime, incredibly. Nah, uh Nah. <laughs> well, it's worth noting that apparently in 1988. So remember that Seoul hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics. Uh, and with that, there was a large development boom. Uh, but oh, there were course. bans. There were bans against international construction contractor signing projects in Seoul. So all of them were put up basically by South Korean companies who had to do it as quickly as possible because of all the projects being assigned to them. Oh, so, amazing. Uh, so they want to buy domestic to show off for the Olympics, which, and they just get these guys. Jesus. So, <laughs> just dudes. I, yeah, just dudes, basically. Just guys being dudes. <laughs> we are, I, I think we have to say, <laughs> officially, episode two, we are an anti-Olympics podcast. Yes. Oh, hell yeah. Like, <laughs> fuck the Olympics, fuck the IOC. It's very bad. Um, yeah, just horrible idea for your city or for anyone. Didn't Philly try and do an Olympics bid? We do every so often, and then uh, the, the mayor got real bit out of shape because everyone in Philly realized how goddamn stupid it would be. Make LA do it. <laughs> I was like, gonna say they they are. Mm. Uh, Atlanta so... had the only good Olympics because they just reused all the stuff they already had, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So for well, we, it's... go ahead. Uh, well, we in uh, when we in London did it in 2012, we just sort of created a shadow run style like corporate state within a state that is now like constantly patrolled and like spotlights and shit in the middle of East London. It's Didn't awesome. They... I remember when East London was bad. I miss bad East London. Mm. Didn't they have like dedicated uh, lanes uh... for Olympic Committee? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, did, yeah, yeah, God, yeah. God, did they really? Yeah, it was, we literally had, like, Zhiguli lanes from, like, the, the Soviet Union, but more expensive and worse. Like, <laughs> were, they, were they subject to, like, the congestion charge? Anything no. like that? Or just, oh, of course <laughs> no. not. No. Why did I even ask? <laughs> <laughs> For what it's worth, the uh, building was apparently built under both regimes. Uh, South Korea implemented democracy in 1988, but the building started to be constructed in 1987. Mm. So, I'm gonna, so the top the top floor you know, where the columns were misaligned was constructed under democracy, and that's why they didn't align. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's my theory. Yeah, the top floor was doing <laughs> was doing grievance studies, and the bottom four floors were all doing STEM. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, what what's the lesson from this, other than capitalism's bad? Uh, yeah, capitalism bad, Olympics bad, corruption uh, bad, corruption bad, car bad, train good, factor of safety um, good, factor of safety bad, good. economics uh, bad, it, he, he said floors good, but make sure um, you build for ideally on Big ground level, asterisk, yeah, yeah, and just don't let these just absolute mother. Fuckers run mm-hmm. anything ever. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a universal yes. truth. Thanks, mm-hmm. South Please note this building yeah. is still standing. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like I it it might be sort of monstrous Unoccupied. hypocritical <laughs> ambition, but when it comes to a big prestige project, right, like it hasn't fallen down. You can say yes. that much for it. it. That is a building that is still there. Because it's at least a sincere ambition rather than one guy trying to get all of your money and then running 20 minutes before the columns break. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, does anyone have anything to pitch before we go? Um, listen to Trash Future, my other podcast. And uh, we have a Patreon too. You can subscribe to it. We're very funny and also. Very timely. We're doing a lot about MIT Media Lab at the moment, which is much in the news. Ooh, fun. Uh, uh, 
I have nothing to pitch except, I guess, follow me on Twitter uh, when I inevitably become a dick in your mentions. Yes. <laughs> All right, and I guess watch my YouTube channel, which is probably where you're watching this, or you might be listening to it on uh, some kind of podcast platform, in which case, uh, if, if, if you've been confused about what we've been talking about in terms of the building, which is still standing up, there's a picture of the uh, Ruyong Hotel in Pyongyang uh, on the screen right now, uh, which, again, did not fall mm. over. Uh, all right, so, so that was another, that was episode two of... Well, there's your problem. And on the next episode, we're going to do the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. All right. Oh, hell yeah. Mm, awesome. Okay. Uh, bye, everyone. Bye.